Good morning and welcome to Starting Line Church. My name is Alex DeBat and I'm the Connections Pastor here. Guys, we are so excited that you're joining us here today. And here at Starting Line Church, we exist to help people embrace that there is more to life through Jesus Christ. And we believe that there is more and we can live into that. Now today is a special day because it is launch Sunday here at Starting Line Church. So if you're watching this morning, we would love to know that you are with us and want to connect with us. And you can do that in two different ways. One, you can text WELCOME to 440-291-5777 or visit us at startingline.church backslash connect. And speaking of connection, we want to tell you one thing about what's happening here at Starting Line. Part of who we are is the fact that we grow together as one community and that we want to embrace relationships with one another. We don't want the fact that we're digital to stop us from connecting with one another. So on Sunday, April 11th, we are starting what we are calling Starting Line Communities for us to come together with other people from all walks of life to get to know one another and discuss deeper things right after the service in a digital platform like Zoom. We'll be talking more about this in the next coming weeks, but if you want to know more before we do this, go to startingline.church backslash SL communities. Now let us continue our service by worshiping together. Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Launch Sunday here at Starting Line Church. We are so excited that you have decided uh, to tune in and uh, just join us today. Uh, We're super excited that you're here. As we begin our service, uh, we're just going to enter into a time of singing. And if you aren't familiar uh, with church um, or maybe have have never been, uh, one of the reasons that we sing as we come together um, is is just to praise God. Uh, We believe that he is worthy of all of our praises. And so if if you don't feel comfortable singing, that's totally okay. Uh, Feel free just to Uh, read the words that are going to be on the bottom of the screen and just think about what they mean. One of the reasons we also sing is uh, because we sing what we believe. And so it helps reinforce what we believe about God, what we believe about ourselves, and what we believe um, about our relationship with the people around us. Um, And so we're just going to spend some time singing. Feel free to belt it out wherever you are. If you're watching from home, if you're in your car, wherever you are, feel free to just uh, sing and worship along with us. So uh, let's get started. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. To sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you Oh, 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 oh. we praise you Oh, 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 oh. Let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside let it rise, let faith arise, let it rise. We'll see you break down every wall, we'll watch the giants fall. If you cannot survive when we praise you, the God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 o
This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We pray. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we pray. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we pray to you. Oh, 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 we Amen, amen. Let's keep singing together. In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father Praise the Son Reveal the kingdom come and to reconcile the lost. You redeemed the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of In the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born. And the Spirit in the flame, this gospel truth of all shall not kill, shall not pain. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Let's do this now, let's proclaim this together. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory.
Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we're so thankful uh, just for each and every person that is tuning in uh, today on this uh, launch Sunday. Uh, what a glorious day it is uh, that uh, a new expression uh, of your church is, is launched. And so God, as, as we prepare to uh, listen to a message from Pastor Al, God, would you uh, just speak through her? Uh, would you open our ears? Would you open our hearts? Would you soften them uh, to hear what you would have to say to us today through Pastor Al. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning and welcome to Starting Line Church. My name is Al. I'm one of the pastors here and we're just so excited that you have joined us this morning. It's an exciting day because it is our digital launch Sunday, which means it is our first time that we're gathered together as one church. And man, does it feel like a long time coming. We've anticipated and dreamed of and waited for this day for so long, and it's finally here. Have you ever had to wait a long time for something like that? Maybe you wait a lot for things in your life. Maybe you feel like you're a professional at playing the waiting game. Waiting. It's real. The DMV the grocery store checkout line, the traffic jams, long lines, Jesus give us strength. Am I right? Our team to win the World Series, our team to win a Super Bowl, a championship. Those who live in Cleveland, we get this. This is real. Maybe it's something more serious. Waiting for medical test results. The right spouse the job of your dreams, a specific phone call for pain to be gone, a piece of good news, something that you've been praying for, just wanting for decades for the COVID-19 pandemic to be over and done with because it's been hard and lonely and painful and it's brought tension and people have suffered and died. What are you waiting for right now? Today we're starting a series called When the Unexpected Hits, where we're going to take a look at someone in the Bible whose life for years and years had unexpected turn after unexpected turn. Someone who knows what it's like when the unexpected hits their life. Just like us. His name is David, and David is a main character throughout the Old Testament of the Bible and is mentioned a lot in many different stories. And David played the waiting game in his life and waited specifically for something for decades to finally come to fruition. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know if you're in a place of waiting that has felt like decades or maybe it actually has been. But I can guess that if you aren't right now, you either have been or you will. So this morning, as we start our series about the unexpected things in life, we're going to start talking about waiting. Our story begins with someone by the name of Saul, reigning as the king of Israel, and he has been for about 25 years. And what you need to know about Saul, King Saul, is that his reign was not necessarily going well. He made it a hobby of his to disobey God and rebel against him make huge mistakes, and allow his pride to get in the way of pretty much every decision he made. Which is partly why Saul's kingship and dynasty was not going to endure much longer than it already has. In fact, God had already chosen his replacement and was preparing to anoint and bring on a new king to take Saul's place. So he speaks to a prophet named Samuel and gives him the plan. If you don't know what a prophet is, a prophet is someone who receives messages from God and then conveys them to a specific group of people that God desires. There were a lot of these in the Bible. So it's like a mediator between God and humanity. Well, the prophet Samuel goes to find someone named Jesse in the town of Bethlehem, who we know is David's father, because God told him that he was to go to him to find the new king. We start reading in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 through 9. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. 
People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Samuel is there to anoint the new king of Israel. And we see that Jesse brought out each of his sons before the prophet Samuel one by one, but something wasn't right. It wasn't going smoothly and Samuel kept getting it wrong. When he brought out out each one of them, Samuel was like, nope, not him, not him, not him either, not him. None of them were who God wanted and had in mind to be the king. So what's happening? What's going on? God was very clear that Samuel needed to go here to find the new king. Let's keep reading. Verse 10. Jesse had since sent, had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Well, they're still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep, Samuel said. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. The drama builds as the story doesn't name King Saul's replacement until the final verse of this passage. David is the future king of Israel. David is going to take the throne. David, who was tending the sheep, the youngest of Jesse's sons, the least qualified from a human point of view. David, who was so far removed from, removed from his father's mind as a possible candidate for the job that he didn't even bring him out initially. In fact, at the time, we know that he was a boy or a youth. His age ranged somewhere between a child to an adolescent, which means that David was anointed king somewhere between the age 10 and 15. Now I want you to take a second and I want you to think of all the 10 to 15 year old boys you know. Okay. Picture that for a minute. Okay, moving on. So David, right, he doesn't look the part. David doesn't look the part. He's the youngest of them all. There's so many others more qualified and ready to be king. But this unexpected moment happens where God puts him in this role when no one understands why. It says that David was chosen because he was someone after God's heart, because he was devoted and committed to the Lord, not because of his age or his stature. So David, he's king, right? Like, what, what's next? What, what happens? It's, it's like the cliffhanger at the end of movies and, or at the end of an episode that you have to wait until the next season to find out what happens. My husband loves the Star Wars Mandalorian TV series. I'm, I'm trying to get into it, okay? But all I've heard about is how am I supposed to wait a whole year to see what happens to Grogu or Baby Yoda or whatever his name is? But does David have to wait a whole year? Does he take the throne at 10 years old? We jump to 2 Samuel chapter 5 to see what happens. It says in the, starting at verse two, in the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, you will shepherd my people Israel and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to, come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 40 years. 30 years old. David became king over Israel when he was 30 years old. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. That means that he was anointed and promised by God to be king and then had to wait to do so. Not two days, not two weeks. Not two months, not two years, two decades, 15 to 20 years before he took the throne. But why? And the answer to that, I don't know. 
there are theories and ideas, but I, I don't know. And I don't think we can claim to know because we're not God. But one thing I do know is that the, this is the reality for all of us. We play the waiting game too. We've all been there. I've been there. Just a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in Olmsted Falls, Ohio, um, which is a suburb of Cleveland. And I graduated from Olmsted Falls High School. And my senior year of high school was just a year that I was really looking forward to. I was a two-sport athlete with basketball being one of those sports. And our team was supposed to be really good this year. And I was still trying to decide if I would continue to play in college. There was a lot of great anticipation for what was ahead. I'd been waiting for this final season for so long. But two weeks before our first game, my senior year, I, I landed wrong in practice and fell to the ground after hearing and feeling um, my knee pop and tear. And after many tears and much pain and conversations and tests, it was confirmed that I had tore the ACL in my right knee, resulting in my competitive um, sports journey to end abruptly. I could say a lot about that time in my life. But specifically, it began a, p a waiting period that lasted much longer than I wanted. It led to waiting for answers, waiting for surgery, waiting to walk again, waiting to get through 10 months of physical therapy, waiting for a sense of joy, peace, waiting for heartbreak and pain to be gone and go away, waiting for a sense of normalcy again, all while watching the season from the sidelines. I was waiting for this time of my life to be over so I could move on. All while wishing it never happened in the first place. Have you been here? Have you been here? Where all you've been doing is waiting? Where there's so much uncertainty, where you desperately want to just stop sitting around and waiting for something to happen? It's real and it's hard. But I can tell you from my experience that God showed up in the waiting. In fact, he was there all along. And I think that's probably where David at was, was also at. Because waiting is it's hard, but it's crucial in our lives. Reason number one why it's crucial, waiting prepares us for what's coming. We've all been there when we aren't prepared, right? I would hope, I would, I would assume so. A, a conversation you didn't know was happening, the news that you had no idea was coming, the test that you didn't study for, a lot of times that math test doesn't go well because you are not prepared. Unless you're one of those annoying people that uh, never had to study for anything and still got an A. That was not me. I'm jealous of you. But we learned that David went through a lot of preparation in those two decades before he took the throne. After he was anointed as king, Saul actually um, sends one of his advisors to find someone to play the, the lyre in his court, which is like a harp. It's a musical instrument. Well, guess who he finds for that task? David. David then becomes one of Saul's close attendants and advisors and goes on to be a military general for Saul's army. So the person that David is supposed to take over for as king, he begins working under him and does so for a very long time. He was in this space of transition that was weird and uncomfortable and strange. It reminds me of something called liminal spaces. Liminal spaces are crossing over spaces. They're spaces that allow you to make a transition to something else. It's, it's used a lot in architecture. An elevator, a stairwell, a hallway, a mudroom, and a house. These would all be described as those. It's where you've left something behind, yet are not fully in something else. A link between what was and what you're preparing for what's coming. I don't know about you, but it seems like right now David is in the stairwell. David is in the mudroom taking off his muddy shoes so he doesn't drag them through the house. 
He knows where he's headed, but he's not fully there yet. His waiting was a time of transition between being a shepherd and being a king. And even though I don't know the exact reason why David had to wait two decades to become the king of Israel, I would guess that he needed this time to prepare for such a huge task. David, I would imagine, learned in this time and grew in this time and matured in this time, all to bring him to a place of preparation for what was to come. It's the same for us, too. And I believe that it's in those times of preparation for what's to come, the season of waiting in our lives, that we have the potential to experience incredible transformation because we now have the ability to pay attention to the journey of how we got to where we ended up. And if we're paying attention to the journey of where we're headed, that means our eyes are open and we're ready for movement. See, when we embrace the liminal space, the here and now, the transitional moments in our lives that are necessary for growth, we stop focusing on either what's behind us or what's ahead of us and focus on the present moment. How many times do we miss what God is preparing us for because we're wishing the waiting period away because we're frustrated that we're in the waiting in the first place? How many times do we miss what God's doing in that moment? Do not allow your season of waiting to pass you by, to pass you by before you open your eyes to see what God wants to prepare you for in it. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you're going through, but what is it that you need to learn to prepare you for what's ahead, for what's coming that you don't even know yet? Maybe you need to learn a lesson about yourself, learn something new about God, or learn a practical, st practical skill. Maybe you need to break a bad habit or turn from a sinful desire or stop your bad attitude. I don't know. My prayer is that you don't miss the preparation. Reason number two of why waiting is crucial. Number two, waiting causes us to run with Jesus. We run to so many, we run with so many things in our lives, don't we? Relationships, security, money, addictions, quick answers, affirmation, our feelings and emotions, all to make us feel like life is under control and everything is fine. And that we don't have to wait for anything because we deserve to have things now. That's our culture, right? That's our culture. And while waiting is difficult and hard and not fair, God is over here going, what you're going through is hard and I'm grieving with you. But life with me is not just about you. Life with me is not just about a quick answer or an end result or about masking pain. Running this race with me is a journey where you are leaning into me as I walk with you. One that's filled with ups and downs and learning and growing and drawing closer and closer to Jesus each and every day as you run with him. In your waiting, Jesus wants to run this race with you because it's in those times that you get to focus in on your relationship with him and to get to know God for God. In your waiting, you will learn things about Jesus that are crucial to your journey with Jesus that's going to continue. Jesus might be teaching something about himself in your waiting. And when you realize that your waiting is an opportunity to learn more about your Savior, you'll notice more and more that He will be your peace, and He will be your strength, and He will be your joy, and He will be your guide. And even though we might not understand exactly what's going on, we can hold on to the hope that we're running this race with a God who does. What are you running with while you wait? A person, a substance, a way of thinking, a desire, something practical. This morning, I want to challenge you to run with Jesus in your waiting. How do we do that? Well, honestly, I think it's so easy to feel stagnant when we wait. 
like we're just like twiddling our thumbs and like staring up into the ceiling, just kind of waiting for something to happen. But what if running with Jesus in our waiting actually involved action? What if it involved having an ongoing conversation with the savior of the world who cares about you? Ask him for what you're waiting for. Ask him, t tell him your frustrations. There have been many times in my life where I've been upset with God and I've told him, told him that he can handle it. Pray for things to happen in your life. It's, it's okay to pray boldly for things. But I think we, we don't want to go to, we don't want to run with Jesus in our waiting. We don't want to have those conversations because we're afraid that we won't get what we want. We're afraid of being let down. But let me tell you something this morning. When we're running with Jesus, we'll realize that we'll never be let down. Because he himself is all that we need. And he himself fulfills all the desires of our heart. Maybe you're watching today and you're not a Christian and you're hesitant towards church. But God's been drawing you in and you want to learn more about what running with Jesus looks like. Maybe you're a Christ follower and this has been just a hard season for you of waiting. We want to walk this journey with you because we know what waiting is like. If you're in a waiting period this morning, I'm sorry. I really am sorry. But Jesus sees you and he hears you and he values you. And if you let him use it for good, I promise you that he will. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. Continue to join us as we pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for a word from Pastor Al about just running the race called life and finding you in the waiting. God, I just pray that we're able to find you in the waiting and find that you are running with us in this race called life. Um, continue to be with us um, and continue to um, help us to see you as we run this race. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for joining us. We would love to encourage you as we are going to launch Starting Line Communities on April 11th to head to startingline.church slash slcommunities to learn more about that. Now, as we continue on with this service, we are going to start something called Starting Line Kids for Families and Kids in five minutes. Again, we're going to do that in five minutes, and it's just a great way to connect um, kids to learning more about the Bible and Jesus. So thanks again, and we hope to see you next week. should clean the observatory. Or maybe it's snack time. 
Another mess? I just cleaned this place. Or maybe I get somebody else to do it. Call Speedy Cleaning Service. Now, while I'm waiting, I should have a snack. I should not eat cereal off the floor. Or maybe. My name is Harper, and this is how we answered the problem of the birthday invite excuse. Oh, whoops, an AC traffic jam. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Harper. It's my first day. How'd you know? Because your face looks like this. <laughs> I'm just so excited to see Connect HQ. Joining the team is a dream come true. My name is Dorothy, but everyone calls me Dot. I'm a leader in training. Me too, and I can't wait to get started. I know, know how I know? Because you're doing this. I promise I'll contain myself. Have you seen Captain Ray? I was gonna find batteries for this gadget, but I'd be happy to find Ray for you. She's so smart. You'll love working with her. Thanks, Dot. Oh, wow, that was speedy. Hi, I'm Harper. You're the cleaning lady from the cleaning service I called earlier. No, I'm sorry, I'm not the Don't ever be sorry for being early. Now, did you bring any of your own cleaning supplies? I didn't bring my cleaning tools because I'm not the cleaner. That's fine, we have brooms here. Anyways, incoming oh, message. Don't be alarmed, but we're getting a very important video message from one of our Connect field offices. Heads up everyone, it's from our field office in Nebraska. Howdy, Connect HQ. Gene here. As you know, we have kids coming in all the time looking for answers to their problems. Today, this young gentleman came in looking for help. Tell them what you told me, Henry. My birthday's coming up. This year, my parents gave me the responsibility of making the invite list myself. I want to invite my friend Lewis, but he plays on a different soccer team than I do. I know the right thing I should do is invite Lewis, but if I do, my teammates will be mad at me and make fun of Lewis. So what's the best way to tell him he's not invited? Here in Nebraska, that's what we call a big problemo. Please help Connect HQ, over and out. Hmm, seems like Henry's problem is bigger than he thinks. How do we help? Well, cleaning lady, when we get a problem, first we get our assignments from Captain Ray. Incoming message. All right, team, sounds like Henry's looking for us to make an excuse for him not to invite his friend. That's no good. Let's find our links. Links? Yeah, they're like clues that help us solve the problem. Let's find a great way to show Henry this point. No more excuses. It's time to grow up. I'll look for a verse link. Great. Partner up with Dot. I got Nick. Nice. You guys find a Bible story link. And remember, team, the quicker that we find these links, the quicker we can help solve Henry's problem. Cleaning lady, you're with me. Boom! That's how it's done. All right, so I've already cleaned up most of the cereal mess. Uh, do you have any questions? Actually, I Wait, should tell you that I, I need level 56. In what, Cake Smash? Nope. Cracker Crunch? It's a new game called Cookie Cram. Should we give out assignments? Yep, we're on Bible story duty. Come on. All right. Hmm, let's see. Who are some famous excuse makers in the Bible? Uh, Adam and Eve. Jonah. Uh, Moses made a lot of excuses. What about a Bible story where somebody chooses not to make an excuse when they easily could? Oh, what about a Bible story where someone chooses not to make an excuse when they easily could? That's what you just said. What about Samuel? What about Samuel? Here, I've got a Bible story. Just put it on your tablet. It's called A Voice in the Night. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's a life of Christ to hide in your heart and in your mind. Oh,
testaments are set up for the big event when jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement it's history his story whose story god's story oh the story about martin loves me let it blow up all the cages let this show go live let his world explode from this video into your life Hannah was sad because she had no children. She prayed, and God gave her a son, Samuel. She was very grateful, so she gave Samuel to God to serve him. Hannah left her little boy at the tabernacle with Eli, the priest. Samuel helped old blind Eli. He even slept in the tabernacle while Eli slept in a room nearby. One night, Samuel heard someone call his name. He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, he said. I didn't call you, Eli grunted. Go back to bed. Samuel crept back to bed. He heard his name again. Samuel ran back to Eli. Here I am, he said. I didn't call you, Eli sighed sleepily. Go back to bed. After Samuel heard the voice a third time, Eli said it was the Lord. If he calls again, said Eli, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel did. Samuel, God said, can you be my prophet and pass my words faithfully on to my people? I can, said Samuel. And he did, until he was an old man. Samuel didn't make excuses like, I'm too tired, or I don't want to. He obeyed and did the right thing right away. And he could have easily said, I'm too young, which is what a lot of kids say, and they miss out what God's doing in their life right now. I think we found our link. The Bible story is a voice in the night. Bible link acquired. Yeah! yeah. Boom! Ooh. All right, you guys go share! Thanks for your help. Why did he talk into his watch like that? To capture the link. Gotta go share with everyone else. See ya! She gave me the point link. Wait, what are you doing? Mike thinks I'm the cleaning lady, so I'm... cleaning? Wait, did you tell him you're not? I think it's too late. Come on, let's go find Mike and set that goofball straight. No, he'll be embarrassed. So what, you're just gonna be the cleaning lady from now on? I'm still helping out as part of the team. But you're missing out on being the leader God wants for you to be, just because you're afraid to say something. I'm telling Mike. No, please don't. It might make me look stupid if I say something now. What is that noise? I found batteries for this gadget. What is it? An excuse detector. Hey, Dot. The Skip Vision Group made a video with our verse link. Who's this? Guess this is the new cleaning lady. Oh, nice to meet you. Wow, this place looks super great. And so does your hair. Thanks. Here, watch this video with us. Hey, Winston. Hey, Carly. Can I pour this glass of cold water on your head? What do you think? Well, I really want to, but I know I shouldn't, so take this glass from me so I won't be tempted. Okay. You know, that reminds me of a verse from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 17. It goes like this. Repeat after me. James 4, 17. James 4, 17. Remember. Remember. It is sin to know what you ought to do. It is sin to know what you ought to do. And then not do it. And then not do it. Hey. 
Well, you know, if it's not good to pour water on your head, then you shouldn't pour water on your head. Hope that helped, Alyssa. Hmm. I got you a little bit too. <laughs> I know. This verse teaches us to not make excuses when we know the right thing to do. The verse link is James 417. Verse link acquired. Let's get back to the hub. It's nice to meet you. You should say something. Hey, Doug. Who's that with you? Alyssa? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I meant the girl behind you. Oh, that's Harper. Mike hired her to clean up around here. How many times have I told you guys that Mike cannot do any hiring? Tell him, Harper. No more excuses. It's time to grow up. OK, everyone, I'm not the cleaning lady. I'm a new leader in training. What? Why didn't you say something? I was afraid of saying anything. I didn't want you to be embarrassed. <laughs> oh, it takes a lot more than that to embarrass Mike. Instead of speaking up, I wasted time making excuses. Wait, Harper, say that again. Instead of speaking up, I wasted time making excuses. Limit link uploaded. Your story about making excuses is an example you could share with Henry. It's a live it link. Great <laughs> job. Bible link uploaded. And the Bible story is about how Samuel obeyed right away. Verse link uploaded. And our verse today is James 417. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Now. Who knows the point? Oh, I do. No more excuses. It's time to grow up. Point link uploaded. Great job, team. With these links, we can help Henry learn that God wants him to do the right things instead of making excuses. Now, that's part of growing up. And we couldn't have done this without Harper. <laughs> well, welcome to Connect HQ, Harper. It's been quite a first day for you. Would you? Like to make the video that we send to Henry? I'd love to. Sweet, I'll teach you how. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold up, Mike. Did you hire a cleaning crew to help clean up your mess? Yeah, hmm? it was way too hard. No more excuses, Mike. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Henry. My name is Harper, and I'm part of Connect HQ. We found an answer for you. The Bible tells us this in James. Hey, Carly. Hey, Winston. Hey, hey Henry. Henry. Oh, Woo. yeah. Are you ready? Yes. Let's do it. James 4, 17. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Oh, yeah. We're the best. We're the best. Mm -hmm. You ought to invite your friend to your party, no matter what your friends say. Instead of looking for an excuse, God wants you to be a good example right now. Just like Samuel was obedient, part of growing up is not making excuses when life gets tough. I had a mix up today, and instead of speaking up, I was quiet because that was easier. If I wouldn't have said something, I may have missed out on big things God has planned for me. I almost missed out on helping you. Invite your friend, stand up for him. God has big plans for you too. No more excuses, it's time to grow up. Happy birthday, and remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Thanks, Connect HQ. You know what, I may not be the best singer, but I love worshiping God with songs. I may not be the best dancer, but I give it all I've got. And you wanna know why? Because worship isn't about how good I am. Worship is about how good God is. And I know he loves it when we connect to him together at church. So give him all you've got, get on your feet, and let's connect to God together.
know that you're always gonna be there